Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, this is going to be part two for our isometric illustration website. Today, we're actually creating the illustration, so we're going to hop in straight away to Adobe Illustrator and get started. So once you're in Adobe Illustrator, I have three swatches here. I'll explain these in a minute. First thing we need to do is set up our isometric grid. So this layer right here, I'm just going to name this color, and then I'm going to lock it. Then I'm going to create a new layer and rename it grid. And this is where our grid is going to be housed and we're gonna lock it once we create it. So I'm gonna hit Command R to bring up my rulers and then I'm just going to drag out a guide onto the screen. Go up to view and then go to guides and make sure your guides are unlocked. Since mine says lock guides, it is obviously unlocked. Also I have smart guides checked and then snap to pixel. Another thing, when you go to illustrator, go to preferences and then general. Here you can adjust the keyboard increment I'm going to set this to 30 pixels and then press OK. Once I have that selected, I'm just going to drag my guide over to the left side of my artboard. Once it snaps there, I'm going to hit Command, Alt, and then right arrow key, and that's going to create a duplicate 30 pixels to the right, and I'm just going to do that process until I get to the edge of my artboard. Once we've done that, I'm just going to drag across all of them to select them. I'm going to go up to Object, Transform, Rotate. A standard isometric grid is at 120, so I'm going to say OK. Once I have that, I'm going to hit Command C, Command F, and that pastes them exactly in the same place. Then go to Object, Transform, Reflect, make sure it's set to vertical, and then select OK. So that is the grid we're going to be working with. Once we're done with that, we can lock the layer, and then we can create a new layer that we're going to be working in. To hide and show this, you can either use the visibility eyeball here or you can hit command semicolon and that will toggle that on and off so now the colors in the top right corner this first color is the top of our house this is the left side and then this is the right so let's create a cube so you can visually see that so how we do this is we grab the pen tool and then we just zoom in and we create our four points based off of these grids and then I'm just going to grab the eyedropper tool and select the top swatch. And then I'm going to create the right side. And then I'll select the darkest swatch. And then we'll do that one more time for the left side. And then we should have a three dimensional cube. And grab the left swatch. So if we turn off our grid, we now have this nice looking cube. So I'm going to select this and then I'm going to go to my swatches and I'm going to click on the folder to make a new group. And then we'll just name this project 01. You can name it whatever you want and then press OK. So one thing to note is the lightest color will be for the left side. The darkest color will be for the right. So the middle tone is for the top and we're going to follow that throughout the entire illustration. So I'm just going to delete this now and we can start on our house. We can also hide these color swatches since we have them saved over here. So let's turn on our grid. And when I build an isometric illustration, I like to work from the bottom to the top. It just makes things easier to edit. So we're going to start with a rectangle and then we're going to build up from there. So our rectangle is going to be, let's go with one, two, three, four, five, six, in this direction and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in this direction. Doesn't really matter as long as it looks cool. So we'll make sure that's lined up and then we'll complete that. Then I'm going to create this one high and then we'll do the left wall. So we can select the right side first and then select the darkest tone, select the left side select the lightest tone and then the top will be our middle tone. So that's what we have so far. Next, I'm going to make three columns, one for here, one for here, and then we'll adjust this other one over here to make it a cube. So let's just start with one. Same process we did before. Then we create our wall. One thing I want to note is if I zoom in real close here, you can see things are not quite lining up so perfect. If you zoom in when you do this and you're very precise, you can get everything to line up. For this tutorial, I don't want this to be forever long. 
So I'm okay with a little bit of jankiness. If you really want it to be perfect, I would go ahead and zoom in and adjust everything. But for now, this will work. So I'm gonna make this three or four tall. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the direct selection tool. I'll just hit A to grab that and then select the bottom three points. And then we can just drag down holding shift and that will keep everything straight. And we'll go to about there. So that's our first column. I'm gonna select that and hit Command G to group it. And then I'm just going to drag this into place. And we'll put this right there. So if I turn this grid off, we're just one box in all around. And we're gonna do that for the next one. So I'll hold Alt and create a duplicate. And I'll place it there. And this next one I'm gonna create is going to turn into a box. But we're going to start with the column and place it in the same spot. Then I'm going to hit Command Shift G and that will ungroup it so we can edit each wall. Just going to drag this right one out of the way for now. And I'm going to select this one and hit A for the direct selection tool. I'm going to grab this point and hold Shift and grab this one. And then I'm just going to drag this over and we'll go over to about there. And then up the top, I'm going to grab this point, hold shift and grab this point, and then drag that until it connects. And then we can drag our wall back over. Position that. And then we can just drag it over to there. And then I'm going to hit command semicolon, turn that off. So this is what we're left with. You can actually just delete this top since we're not going to be able to see it in a minute. And then we need to bring this forward. So I'm going to hit Command Shift Right Square Bracket Key. So now this will look a little bit better when we place a top on it. And to do that, I'm just going to grab these three faces down here. Hit Command C, hit Command V, Command G to group them. And then we'll turn on our layout grid again. And we'll position that right there. And then we can turn off our grid. And so this is what we have so far. Now it's very hard to tell the difference between the column and this. So we're going to add a shadow to this. So once this is grouped together, go to effect, stylize, and then drop shadow. I'm just going to select preview. And I'm going to play with these settings until I get something I'm happy with. That'll work and we'll press OK. So now that you can see the difference in between, you can tell this is looking more like a three dimensional object and these aren't blending together. Next, what I'm gonna do is grab these two faces, holding Shift, Command C, Command V, and then drag them up, turn back on my grid, and then line that into position. Then we're gonna need to put a top on this. So I'll grab the pen tool and we'll go with an overhang of one block. So that should work. So I'm just going to drag this off to the side to create the bottom of it. So we'll create the right wall and then the left one. And then we need to color this. So there's the right side, left side, and then the top going to group that with command G but then I'm going to select this and then just drag this into place so now we need to do the same thing we need to apply a shadow to this so it doesn't blend in so just go up to effect and then you can hit apply drop shadow and it'll apply the same shadow so now you can see the separation and this is pretty much the same process I followed for the entire house that you're going to see in just a second I'm going to go ahead and do some adjustments to this off camera one thing I want to show you guys is how to do the windows and the door. For that, all I did was I get on the side here and I turn on my grid, grab my pencil, and then I just select the area I want the door to be. So we'll go with like somewhere like that. And then we'll connect it. And then we'll set that to a dark color and we'll make this even darker. 
So I'm just going to do that same process for the windows up here, the windows over here. And then I made little cubes and I'm going to stick them on the roof just for a little bit of detail. I also made some fences, basically just creating this column and then duplicating it and then creating another column that, that connects and then duplicating that over and over. And that's basically how you create isometric art. It's very simple. It looks complex, but you really just create a bunch of cubes. When you get into circles and angles with like different kinds of roof pitches, that can get a little bit harder. But for this tutorial, that is all we need to be able to do. So from there, I'm just going to skip into the future. So this is what our house has looked like. Like I said, I just created these little bitty cubes. Same process as creating all the other stuff in this entire illustration. The only thing I did is on these windows, I applied a drop shadow, which is the same as this layer and this layer, just for a little bit of depth on there. Then also on the fence, I applied the same drop shadow as well. So now I'm going to show you how we do the isometric shadows. So to do that, I'm just going to grab the pen tool. I'm going to turn back on my grid and I need a shadow from this building here shining this direction since the light is hitting it from this front face. This is going to cast a shadow this direction. So I'm going to select a point here and you can just pick a spot. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go with around there and then I'll go back to this point and then connect it here. We can turn off our grid so we can see what's happening. What we need to do now is send this behind this entire section of the house. So I'm going to do that with command left square bracket key until it gets behind absolutely everything I need it to be. Okay, so now I have it below this house, but I want it above these two cubes. So I'm just going to keep going until it overlaps both of them right there. You can also position this by expanding your layer. I haven't really organized mine, so that's kind of hard for me to do. So I just did that. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to properties and then I'm going to drop this down to 30%. Also, the color code I have on this is 433884. And so there you can see the shadow is coming off this building. You see it's overhanging a little bit. To fix that, I'm just going to select this and then select this face, holding shift. Then I'm going to grab shift M and then hold alt and select that piece that's overhanging and that will remove it. I'm actually going to bring this cube forward just because that shadow is kind of hitting behind it. That looks better. And we need to do that for down here as well. So I'm just going to grab my pen tool. I'm going to come out on a similar angle as above. Try to get it as close as you can. About there. And then I'm just going to go all the way back to there. Connect it here to the column and back there. Then I'm going to send that all the way to the back and do the same thing. Just bring it forward until it's in front of everything I need it to be, which we really just want it to be above this floor right here. Once we have that, we can set it to 30% opacity as well. And that's what we're left with. So now that we've done that, we have our isometric illustration done. Pretty simple stuff when you get into it. So I hope this was clear enough for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and export this. And then in the next video, we'll get started back with our website. So let's go to bear real quick. And here we can select illustration as completed. The next thing we need to do in the next video is create our mockup and then create our design. And then the video after that, we will code it and we will be done with our website. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more yard related content. Make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss the next video. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>